Hey, Chief Meteorologist Kendra Kent here in the Fox Carolina Weather Center. Every update we've been getting has been keeping Dorian essentially at right at 110 mile per hour winds, category two, and it is expected to stay there uh, over the next several days, I say several days, for the next 48 hours or so, it's expected to maintain its Category 2 status and then eventually become a Cat 1 on Friday. So it's late Tuesday now. Wednesday, it's expected to stay around 110 miles per hour. Thursday, most likely around 105 miles an hour. And then eventually a little bit weaker as it moves off into the northern Atlantic. So here's the latest track continues to move Dorian in the north toward the northwest and then it begins a curve along the Carolina coast into Thursday. Um, this would take it right along the coast at 2 p.m. on Thursday. So just off the coast of Charleston and then eventually moving up and potentially making a landfall somewhere along the Outer Banks during the day on Friday. But by that time, it's a category one at 2 p.m. on Friday, so most likely this would be Friday morning. It would be weakening, but still enough to cause some major grief along those barrier islands. Um, and, you know, this is a really too close for comfort situation uh, for the Carolina coast. If you're watching from the Western Carolinas, this scenario still brings us very little. Um, we're talking about winds at 20 to 25 miles per hour here. And we're going to have a complete recap of that coming up on the 10 o'clock news. Uh, but right now, it looks like as the track stands, we're not going to see very much. We'll see some clouds. We'll get some breezy conditions at times. Uh, but it does not appear we're going to even get any rain out of it. But all you have to do is head down toward Columbia and south. And that's going to change dramatically over time. So notice that. Again, it'll be Wednesday afternoon that it starts to move toward the Georgia coast. Wednesday night, it begins to pick up speed a bit. And then during the afternoon on Thursday is when it would move right by South Carolina's coast. So close that it could certainly cause issues with storm surge, uh, very heavy rainfall, lots of wind, and then eventually exiting, but potentially making a landfall somewhere along the Outer Banks. But landfall is not always as big of an issue here. I mean, like... If it's coming this close to the coast, uh, yeah, landfall is worse, but you're still going to feel some pretty big impacts out of it. Um, here's a look again at the actual hurricane. Um, still just looking about as healthy as can be. It's moving into some warmer water, but also moving into some wind shear. So those are kind of counteracting to keep the storm at an even keel at 110 miles per hour. So we'll continue to track the storm, bring you more updates. I want you to join me tonight at 10 um, for even more on uh, what we're expecting across the state. Right now, just kind of putting it in basic terms, anywhere in the Western Carolinas with limited impacts, clouds, some breeze or breeze at times. Uh, but as you head down to the south and east, that's when we're going to begin to see the gustier winds, the heavy rain, the orange being kind of the moderate risks there, and then the high risk for those strong winds and heavy rain, and of course, the storm surge along the coast. So we will continue to keep you posted right here in the Fox Carolina Weather Center. Ben and I will have team coverage coming up for you on the 10 o'clock news tonight.